All right, mates, it's lovely to see you again. I'm here with Ethan from Great Britain. You can tell that my accent was terrible. I'll stop doing that now. Uh, but I just want to kick off the episode a little bit of fun. We got some some uh, Europe love on the podcast this week. We have Ethan Wilde joining us uh, to, to go over the Gdansk meta and Lugia because he's been playing Lugia for a while. Um, so I'll give you his thoughts on Lugia going into Gdansk and we'll also give us our tier list um, and meta predictions for Gdansk meta this weekend. Um, Ethan, how's it going for you? I know it's a little late over there in London currently. How are you? Yeah, yeah, I'm doing good. You you ready to sleep? Is it sleep time for you currently? Yeah, it's, Or are it's you? like 9 p.m. at the moment, so it's not it's not too bad. It's I've got a couple of hours before I'm I'm really ready to hit the hay. But Yeah. yeah, Well, how are you feeling? You're home. You've got three k in your pocket. Is it burning a Is it burning a hole for you? I mean, it's de it's definitely nice to get the get the 3k. Yeah, three 3k is a 3k that I didn't have before. Right, um, Right. going going away for a tournament, coming back with. 3k is nice uh but it's it's just more motivation for the next tournament Yeah. Yeah. What so for people that don't know, because obviously I don't know we're in America, what does Europe do for your pricing? Do they take a take a hit of that? uh so europe pricing is i think it's the same as you guys so like we get we Just get normal the income tax tax. we get the tax that you guys get Okay. and then there's like conversion rates depending on what you're convert converting to Yeah. so that can that can screw you out of money occasionally because like i think the pound is better than the dollar so like i think after after the income tax gets taken and the conversion i think it works out around 1600 pounds Yeah, okay. which is still still a good amount That's still right pretty good. Yeah, it's still pretty good. um And then depending on the country, like you can claim the, the income tax back. Because I know Right. in the UK, we're not eligible for the income tax on Okay. earnings through tournaments, because that's winnings, Mm. not earnings. So like we can claim that back. It's just a Okay. long process. <clears throat> yeah, a lot of work, a lot of taxes. Anyways, let's uh let's get to know you a little bit, Ethan. Most people here don't know you. Um, so I got a couple of quick fire questions for you. Are you ready for them? Yeah, go for it. All right, how long have you been playing Pokemon? Uh, five and a half years ish. Five and a half years. What was your first deck? Uh, my first deck was Pika Rom. Pika Rom. Ew, that deck was trash, bro. Uh, what's your favorite Pokemon and why? Yeah. <laughs> a Shuckle. Uh, like in the video games, Shuckle is just so min maxed. Like he's either really good at something or he's like the worst possible thing ever. I mean, it's just pretty cool. Yeah, everyone loves a good Shuckle. I, I know there's a lot of Shuckle memes and fans out there. Uh, what's your favorite TCG deck you've ever played? And don't say Mew Max. I I it's swear Mewvie to God. Max. Mew V Max is so good. Oh, God. Matt, Maddox is listening to this in his car driving somewhere, and he's like, yes, Mew V Max. God. Um, what's your favorite retro or non-standard Pokemon format? Uh favorite non-standard Pokemon format is GLC. I play a lot of GLC. I think we've played GLC together before. Definitely, yeah. It's such a good format. <laughs> My Lost Zone deck is way better than yours, for sure, hands down. I have a feeling we both went three zero in that tournament. We did, we did. Um, what GLC deck have you been playing the most lately? Uh, lately, I've been playing a lot of Dark. After the Marshadow ban, I Yeah. was like, okay, let's go back to let's go back to a different deck. So you're like, And I can't judge someone turn one, so now I'm just going to ability lock them turn one. yeah, basically, Okay, heard. yeah. <laughs> All right, so Mahone, if you're listening, can you please ban Weezing? That'd be great. Um, what do you like to do when you're not playing Pokemon? Uh, when I'm not playing Pokemon, I kind of dabble in other card games, uh, and I play a lot of board games and watch a lot of anime. Okay. Are you a sports guy? You watch football over there? I've got like next to no interest in sport whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, all right, we've got one special question left that a viewer asked me to ask you. What's your least favorite Pokemon and why? Oh, least favorite Pokemon is Floet. What's wrong with Floet? Floet? Floet is just the most irritating Pokemon to me in terms of design. Like if you if you compare compare like Flabebe to Uh-huh. Florges, like the big jump between the two, Floet should bridge that gap, right? 
Floette doesn't bridge the gap. It's basically just Flabebe 2. Like, yeah, but you can flower picking a Floet, bro. You can bench it, take a card from your hand, and put it to the bottom of the deck. I don't care. It should it should look like somewhere in between Flabebe and Florges. And it just doesn't. It just looks like Flabebe 2. Yeah, but we've got we've got Rapid Strike Floet. Do we? Yeah, there was a rapid strike for it, yeah. Uh, I mean, it wasn't played then. It's just I mean, not good. Flip two also, coins, like, do 50 games, for each right? heads. That's the video great. games, they made a big deal about Floet. We got AZ's Floet, right? But it was never distributed. Like, it was found in the game, <laughs> like, in the game code. And they just never distributed AZ's Floet <laughs> to anyone. They just withheld that. They withheld it for, like, 10 years, bro. Listen, I am a proponent of like Floet's the best Pokemon ever, and you can't you can't you know <laughs> argue any other way. So thank you, Pumpkin Amy, for that question. Really appreciate you for putting him through some pain. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, well, let's jump to uh Pokemon standard format and uh let's go back to Lil a little bit. We have some questions from your Lugia list, um, and maybe kind of talking about how we're going to Gdansk if you would make any changes to it. Uh, but the first question is, there's so many good decks in the meta right now, right? I mean, there's arguably good decks, right? People got Bolt, yeah. uh, Charizard. Like, just there's a lot of stuff that's viable. The um, meta is it, open, yeah. Yeah, yeah. the meta is a little bit open, right? So because it's so open, what made you choose Lugia? Like, why play Lugia when, like, you could just open six energy and a Lugia and do nothing? Well, I mean, like, a lot of decks can just open six of a card that they play and do nothing, right? I think that's... That's one of the problems that I found when testing is that like any deck can like open a hand that yeah. just doesn't work, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And like the six energy argument with Lugia is the same with like Maridon. Right on. Right? Yeah. They play exactly. the same energy counts, basically. People yeah. were still playing Maridon for God knows how long. Like <laughs> yeah. people love the deck, it still performs. Well, yeah, you got one Pokemon that gets your whole bench full. I mean, exactly, what... right? You the the benefits outweigh the cost of that like six energy and Lugia yeah. can just like do whatever it wants right it's such a toolboxy deck in this format that we don't really have outside of like lost zone decks like lost zone decks you can kind of play whatever you want in them but aside from that you've kind of got like fixed archetypes right. but Lugia while it's a fixed engine like lugia is just the engine and the way that we enable the deck it's a toolbox from then on because of all the different attackers you put in it like i mean we've probably refined what the good attackers are for lugia and what the bad attackers are right but like, people can still experiment i remember like back in like prime lugia days people <laughs> experimented with like galarian wheezing more peco v <laughs> yeah they put all sorts in it when we had like <clears throat> the best 60 already solved thank and, you like, megan <laughs> at the moment you could put like iron thorns in lugia right you've got that one legacy and then it's a double colorless so yeah. like you you could put a thorns in lugia after you've got set up you could play cornerstone ogre pawn and just wall stuff out if you really wanted to Right. It might not be the best option all the time, but you've got those options available. So you're saying the the roof of the deck, like the ceiling is so much higher, um, and, and your options of a toolbox that like you like choosing a deck like this over, say, Reggie Drago with a toolbox, right? Um yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's it's got a lot more scope. Yeah. Um, so speaking of kind of experimenting, I'm not sure if you've seen this list, so I'm going to kind of explain it to you. But there was a list that won an online tournament this week that played two Monkey Dory and two Luminous Energy. Uh, what? Why is there a Monkey Dory in here? What? What? What are we doing? Are we trying to counter Dragon what, Ball? In, in Lugia. In Lugia, yeah. Cool. Well, like, okay, so the Zard matchup, they're not ever one shotting your Lugia V Star in the early game, right? Yeah. So being able to use those monkey dories, you, you will have damage on your board. You will be able to move okay. damage off. Okay, so you're moving the damage and then you're mind bending and trying to confuse the Zard. You can mind bend or like <laughs> you don't necessarily need to mind bend, right? You just need the luminous so that you've got access to the dark energy for the ability. At that mm -hmm. point, when you're putting the extra damage on, you could maybe like double monkey, KO, a bench Pokemon. Double monkey, bro. Who's got bench space for that? <laughs> 
<laughs> you've got two Archeops on your bench, man. Yeah, you've got man. two Archeops, you've got two Monkey, that's space for a Lugia and another attacker, bro. Bro, <laughs> Where, oh, so you have no fish in play. You set up perfectly. No, no, no. We thought in that away. Okay, okay. You thought in the, okay, you're right. You research the monkey and then thought in the Luminion. Perfect. Easy. Okay. All right, easy. All right. Uh, you've been a big proponent of this on Twitter, on X, whatever you want to call it, that your Sinchino line is optimal. You're playing a one two Sinchino line with a Thornton. Um, I think Thornton's been close to standard now in Zard list, mostly. Sorry, I said Zard Lugia list. Um, but why why do you think 1-2 Sinchino is optimal? So, like, I think it's optimal because of the Thornton, really. Like, a lot of people were were hard fixed on, like, a 1-1 one, one Sinchino early on. So I know, like, Rahul saw yeah. some good success with it, with just the 1-1 one, one line. But, like, 1 in 10 hands with, like, roughly with a 1-1 one, one line, you're opening the Chinchino in your hand, right? And any experience with Lugia, you know that you're probably researching or like using Squawkabilly on that opening hand. You're not yeah. you're not keeping that around. That's going straight to the discard. It doesn't <laughs> matter what's in it. Yeah. You're attaching the best energy that's there and discarding the Pokemon rest. and discarding everything else, right? <laughs> and so one in ten games, roughly, you're discarding your Sinchino before you even have an opportunity to bench the Mincino. And so playing a 1-2 allows you to discard that and then not care. You've still got a 1-1 one, one line available to you in the deck. Right. It also means that if you don't have to discard a Sinchino early, you can just thought a liability into the Mincino when it dies right. and make a second Chinchino. So you're essentially playing like a 2-2 two, two line. Right. I mean, it seems like 2-2 two, is pretty good. I've even seen some people playing a 3-3. Three, three. Um, yeah, I think 3-3 three, three is in. excessive in a Dust Noir format. But yeah. like, 2-2 yeah. two, two is probably the happy middle ground. But cutting a cutting a baby rat for for the Thornton gives you more flexibility with other stuff. All right, so let's talk about another kind of tech card that you've been playing. And I know Brandon Bond's been playing it a lot, too. The Wellspring Ogre Pond. It's a card that can kind of, you know, do some bench damage, take out multiple Charmander potentially, or, you know, multiple Ralts, whatever you're playing against if your opponent doesn't play around it. Um, but now that that card's really kind of like known enough, do you still think it's worth the spot in the deck list, especially going into good dance meta? I think it's still worth a spot. Like, if you look at the Lugia lists that are like topping events, it's very like 50 50 on whether they're bothering or not. Like, I was playing it, I think Yurko was playing it at Louisville, um, but, like, Rahul wasn't, Kieran Farrell wasn't, uh, I don't think Josh was playing it either. So, like, it's very 50-50 on whether it's actually in a Lugia list. So a lot of people just won't expect it. And I think just having it in the list, people are going to go into it trying to be brave, right? Like, they're not going to bench a Manaphy in game one and potentially clog up their bench, give you an easy amp target. Being able to hit them with a Wellspring game one, and then yeah. they have to maybe adjust their game plan game two, but you've already sure. taken that game one, right? Yeah, exactly. And that's all. And like you said, the, the Manaphy coming into play, now it's an amp target, right? So like... Yeah. And, and like that's, that's a really good... also got Sob. Like Sob is a win con. Sob with a DTE can just win you a game. Against Drago, like yeah. they go aggressive in the early game. They get rid of the prime catcher. They get rid of the switch. Yeah. They use their V star because they have to to get yeah. back an energy switch. And then you go, okay, cool. I'm going to gust your Cleffa. I'm going to sob for zero. <laughs> go. And they've already milled half their deck. They can't right. do it. How right many there. games have you won with Sob at a regional? I have won two games with Sob <laughs> at regionals of the last two i've been at that's insane all right well seems like you'll be including that going forward um another card that you don't include in your list that a lot of lugia players do sometimes tech in is jamming tower right now because there's bravery charms everywhere on all the big basic decks ancient booster capsules you know four seal stones there's so much value to a jamming tower What's your kind of thought process of why you don't currently play Jamming Tower? 
And are you considering it for Gdansk? So, like, Mezagoza just gives you a bit more consistency. I mean, it's not reliable, but, like, it's something. And Lugia needs as much of that as you can get. So, like, your stadiums, realistically, you always want them to be Mezagoza and not Jamming Tower. And with, like, a high gust count, like, with, with a place at a boss in your deck, you should always just be gusting around the Bravery Charms. There's probably nothing that you can't take a KO on. So, like, you can go and get an Ogre Pawn that's not going to have a Bravery Charm, or you can make a Cinchino and KO through a Bravery Charm. Yeah. And I think it's the Bravery Charms are only in the big basic decks. Right. You think Lugia has a good matchup into them anyway, because you can skew the prize trade with a single prize at some point, and then right. you're just ahead. Right. And your single prize are also being able to KO through a Bravery Charm. It's like just a double hitter. They have to deal with it. They don't want to deal with it, but it, like it just negates the fact that they're playing bravery charms. Yeah. All right. Well, that's uh, mostly about your list currently. I want to give you an opportunity before we go into further questions. What do you have to think about your list? Do you think there's any changes that you would recommend to people going into Gdansk? I have considered a few cards. Um, I personally don't think they're needed. Like I, I think my list is optimal. I think I'm playing the same sixty to Gdansk. Like I'm locking it. Yeah. And we're just gonna run it back. But like Klefki is a card that could be considered, right? Like with Drago and Lugia being like the two best performing decks, taking like five of the eight slots in top cut at Lille. Mm-hmm. Like Thorns is just good into both of those. Yeah. And like, I just hard lose to Thorns. If I see a Thorns, <clears throat> I get a lunch break, right? So <laughs> it's one of those where like Klefki can potentially get you into that. You put the Klefki in the active, you get the summoning star, you can start getting set up. Yeah. It's so minute that I don't think it's worth it personally, but it's something that you could consider in the list maybe going forward. Right. So that's like your 61st card currently. Yeah. <clears throat> Interesting. Okay. Um. So I got a couple other questions about Lugia in general. You didn't play Lugia to Worlds. You played Bird Control. I did. What, yeah. uh, Lugia didn't really change between now and Worlds. So why play Bird Control if Lugia is just inherently so good? Oh, I, I have been the biggest <clears throat> Lugia hater for such a long time. <laughs> I think like my Twitter bio is a screen grab of me in a Discord server like dumping on Lugia and telling people not to play it because it's a pile. Like I I just haven't in- liked the deck for such a yeah. long time. Um I think I played the deck for the first time in this matter, like a week before the Dortmund regionals because I'd moved all of my decks to like the new Stellar Crown format. Lugia hadn't changed. So it was the only thing that like I could play to cups and challenges. And I had like a triple cup weekend booked in. <laughs> and I was like, well, Didn't I you can't win all three. Bothered. I won all three. Right? <laughs> I, I couldn't be bothered changing any of my decks back so i was like well i'll just play lugia then fine and then i won all three cups in that weekend and hard pivoted to lugia for dortmund bro i tried playing lugia to a cup last week it did not go well man (laughs) it was like i couldn't get a lugia down for two like i played the mirror went second and could have gotten a lugia down after like an iono and a squawk and i'm like all right (laughs) Cool. Yeah, Lugia, yeah, Lugia has those games, right? But so does every other day. Happened to you in top four, right? I mean, it, it just yeah, happens, yeah. Right? I got I got that in top eight. We missed the we missed top the eight, yeah. UV star in in game two. Yeah, that's tough. Um, so you're currently ranked twelfth globally and second in your region. How does that feel? Like when you hear me say that, like, what do you think? What kind of emotions are you feeling? Um, and what do you attribute your success to? And how can others learn from that? Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's pretty cool. Like being being up there is is pretty cool, especially given that like I've not been playing as long as like the majority of players, right? Like, I've played for five and a half years, but like last year was my first 
season actually playing competitively. Before that, it was just like local level, just casual, casual yeah. gamer. So like, it's cool to be up there, but I'm very aware that it's it's the start of the season, right? Right, it's early. We we've had like two majors per per region for yeah. EU and NA. Yeah. So like, and I performed well at one of them, right? So like, that's gonna skew it. In the long term, I probably won't be up there. I'd like to think that I can keep myself up there, but like, it's unrealistic to expect to stay up there. Like. Yeah. Tord is not nearly as high as he should be, right? Tord should be number one EU by the end of the season, without a doubt. And so I'm not expecting to stay up there, but it's very cool to be up there and like start the season off strong, right? Yeah. Because it, it gives you like it takes the pressure off a little, right? Yeah. It Having does, a yeah. good performance early on takes the pressure off. It makes yeah. me feel more comfortable with, yeah, okay, I can I can get an invite like with the new structure and i think people should just take away like like i got my success from just playing games like i didn't i didn't do any coaching with anyone i just played lots of games i used ptcgo when that was a thing i play a lot on live uh and finding friends that actually want to like try and succeed as well helps like i have my testing group and they're all very good at keeping me motivated and wanting to keep playing the game, yeah. testing the matchups, figuring it out. Is there a sense of uh, when you say like, you know, you, you get kind of like you feel good and you feel safe a little bit. Right. Is there a sense of like a thought in your mind where you ever like, man, there's this one deck I really wanted to play. And like, I think it's really good, but I've been kind of scared to play it because like, of the pressure of needing to get points. Do you, does that thought ever creep into your head after you get a good finish like you had? Yeah, yeah. No, it it a hundred percent does. Like, like I'm definitely thinking about other decks, but I don't feel fully safe yet. I think okay. I think once I feel fully safe, like I I personally say once I hit like about the 800 mark. If we're still pretty early on in the season and I've still got a few tournaments left, I can definitely take more risks with something that I think could be well placed. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, so speaking of tournaments, you have what's it like being a competitor in Europe? You know, what what should anyone expect differently when they come to a European regional versus an American regional? So I think the biggest thing between an American regional and a European one is the language barriers, right? Like, you come to a European regional, and if it's not one of the UK ones, there's a potential that the people in the country that you're in speak non, or like, like no English, or like limited English. So you've got to be prepared for that. But that is also a good thing, right? You get to experience culture. You get a lot more culture with European yeah, events. For sure. Like, there is so much, like the food. The food is just really good, right? <laughs> you get different food depending on which country you're in. And the fact that your your food options just are so varied between each month. When, like, in America, I've not done many American events, but I can imagine you've got, like, the same chain restaurants everywhere, right? Yeah, I mean, everywhere you go does have, uh, you know, they have, you, you try to find the local spots, right? You try yeah, to find, you've, like, got, you've got the local spots. Right, when we go to Knoxville, there's a place called Ye Old Steakhouse, and it is, like, the go-to when we're in Knoxville. Um, yeah. You know, every place does have kind of a thing, um, but, yeah, all those chains do exist there, and, you know, I've, I've heard players say that's all they do, and I'm like, really? yeah, oh, where is experience the... life, man. Yeah, whereas you can... You can struggle to find those chains yeah. near the convention centers in some European countries. Interesting, yeah. Like, I know that there's not many food places near the convention center in Gdansk, right? Yeah. So you're kind of forced to go and find local cuisine yeah. and try local foods, which is just really cool to me. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I'm really nervous about EUIC this year being in February instead of April. Uh, I don't like the cold. I live in Florida for a reason. So yeah, it could still be snowing in February, and it probably will be. <laughs> Bro, 
All right. Well, good thing I'm just coming in like Thursday morning and leaving Sunday. <laughs> good God. Um, all right. Well, that does it for kind of like the Lugia segment. Next up, we're going to talk about a quick trivia question and then we'll get into Kadance Meta. But before we do, I do have to uh, quickly thank Nakama Anime Cafe for their continued support of this podcast. Um, just as a reminder, Nakama Con is coming up. on November 9th and 10th, and you can use code BEACHCOURT to save $10 off of a two-day gold pass. So come on out, try to battle the Elite Four, and uh, win some Surging Sparks packs, um, and use the Comic-Con uh, code BEACHCOURT at checkout for your $10 off. Um, so yeah, Ethan, we're going to do a quick trivia question. Um, it, it should be pretty easy. Um, I did change it in this five minutes we've been on this podcast, or however long, because... You said another answer, and I was like, I can't give you that question anymore because you already said it. Uh, so I had to change it a little bit. Um, but seeing that you're now like the Lugia main, like you and Rahul are kind of like the Lugia mains and Kieran, right? What was the first major that Lugia ever won? Who won it, and what tournament was it? Ah, right. I, I mean, like the first major that Lugia won, like it was probably like an Australian one. I have a feeling it was like an Australian weekend. Um, I'm not sure that I might be remembering wrong and that might be Palkia. I know that there were a few Australian events at the end of the Sword Shield block where like the top eight was basically just swarmed with the new deck. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to go with an Australian one. I'm going to say it was like I don't know, maybe Melbourne. Uh, maybe it was Kiawan. Okay. Not Australia. Not Australia. <laughs> I'll give you a hint, and then we'll see if you can get it off the hint. The number one player that you said should be number one by the end of the year won with Lugia. Okay. What turn so, was it? So Todd, Todd won with Lugia. Did Lugia come out around... Oh, was it LAIC? It was LAIC 2022. Yep. Yeah, because it was like the new set. It was the the new deck. Yeah, it was the new one. deck. We the had Lugia. good old Orangaroo and Stoutland V and Eveltal and all the good stuff in Lugia. So yeah, a little... I was going to ask you what was the last one that won, but you said Yurko earlier, and I was like, oh god, he's going to know it's Yurko. <laughs> <laughs> So, I, I think switch. actually that's wrong, right? Because it just won in the Philippines. Uh, true. That would be true. Yeah, it, it did just win in the Philippines. But whoever the whoever the guy in the Philippines was. Yeah, the, but it's not on that event. But so yeah, it, the last the last one in our yeah. circuit was yeah. Okay. All of my questions are based off of Limitless.com. So. <laughs> All right, next up, let's jump into Gdansk Meta. So when we come up on the screen, for those of you that are listening on Spotify, Google, Apple, you'll want to come over to YouTube and check us out here. Uh, we've got um, the Trainer Hill meta, meta sheet up. I have preloaded the meta for Lil. So this is all the um, <clears throat> meta percentages. we got 15% Raging Bolt, Charizard 10%, Lugia 10%, Palkia 8%, Drago 8%. Um, and then so on and so forth. So, Ethan, um, what are your recommendations for change? Like, where do you see change in the meta between Lil and Gdansk? So, I think after Regidrago, like, swarming the top eight, being like a Regidrago mirror in the ASIM game as well, like, the play rate of Regidrago is going to move up from fifth. Okay. Uh, I'd probably say Regidrago moves to, like, 12%. Like, okay. Like... It's not going to take the top spot. I think Raging Bolt is still just going to be the top spot. But I think Charizard's going to drop. I think Regidrago is going to... I think, realistically, like Regidrago and Charizard are going to swap places okay. um, for the top six. And I think maybe Terrapagos drops off and swaps with Dragapult. Okay, yeah. Did I input that wrong, actually, now that I'm, like, questioning myself? Yeah, I did. Dragapult's actually was eight. My bad. Uh, I messed up there. So where's Dragapult? Here we are. Dragapult was eight, and then Terrapagos was seven. Okay, there we go. Um, That looks right. 
And then lost zone was only three. Dude, I messed up here, dude. <laughs> this is day two. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, now we're good. Now we're back. Okay, so we got, I agree with you. I think Drago is going to go up. Um, so you think it's going to come from the the Zard players are going to switch back over to Drago? Yeah, I think I think Zard's <clears> definitely <throat> going to drop off. Like with with Raging Bolt, Lugia, and Regidrago all like either being big percentage decks or just performing well in general. Yeah, like that's not good for Charizard in the slightest. Yeah, I kind of think Baynet's going to go up a little bit too. I think we're going to see Baynet somewhere around like six to seven. I think it will. I think it's. <laughs> I think it's definitely a European deck. Yeah. It's like, I think the Polish players have worked on Burnett for so long and our regional being in Poland. Yeah. Like, it's probably going to shoot shoot up a couple of percentile. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's, uh, let's put Zard. I think Zard, what do you think? 7% for Zard? Yeah, probably. All right. We're going to tick Drago up to, is Drago going to be higher than Lugia? Yes, yeah. So let's put Drago at 11. Um, what do we think about... So we're going to put Baynet up to 6. Um, we think Dragapult's coming down a little bit, or was it going to stay at 8? I think Dragapult's about right at 8. You think it's still going to stay at 8? No, it didn't do well at all. I mean, it made finals, right? And then Louisville, it won. That's Did fair. Yeah, 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 that's fair. So like it's it's placed and then Dortmund. Okay. Dortmund did one as well, right? Yeah. Yeah, so we like can Dragapult leave it has done well. It, it's just the deck man, it's just like if, if Bolt's like popular, how does Pult how does you know, how does it do well? Like they're not playing Radzar, which blows my mind. But it can like, take those like big turns, right? I you know. can just wipe the board. I you know. Alakazam's good, I, I get it, but holy moly. Like there's no way Radzar is just not better. Anyways, um, <laughs> what about Palkia Dustnor? Is that coming down or is that staying around 8%? I think it might. I think it probably stays around 8%. I don't see it dropping off too much. Okay. So what are you, our predictions are on the right. What are you thinking? I think, I think that. Iron Thorns will probably see an increase from three percent. I mean, but to what four? I mean, it's, it's really probably going agree. up to like four five. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't see it going higher than four. No one wants to play that deck. No one wants to play the deck, right? But it's very good into Lugia. It's very good into Regidrago. Yeah, yeah. I, I I just don't think it's Bolt matchups very good. Like with or without Slitherwing, I don't think it's Bolt matchups pretty good. Yeah, I think it's probably like. Without Slitherwing, it's probably about 50%, right? Yeah, probably. And then with it, it's like, you're so unfavored. <laughs> but it's whether the Bolts convert well, right? Because the Bolt bolt play rate has been through the roof, but just hasn't converted well at most majors. Yeah. So if you, if you don't hit the Bolts early and you're doing well, you probably don't see Bolt again for the rest of the tournament. Yeah, I mean, I kind of think Bolt's going to drop a couple percentage from, from this sheet. It I might think, not be 15 anymore. It yeah, I think be, like maybe like 13 or 12, right? Yeah, it might be a bit closer on the on the top end. Lost Box is going to be lower than 3% now. Yeah, because Drago's like everywhere, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty much gone at that point. Yeah, I'll just put it at 1. Maraiden might see an uptick. Yeah, I mean, now that I mean, Drago's back, right? If Drago and, and Lugi are there... Maraiden going up to five percent, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't right. be surprised at. I can get behind that. Yeah. What about cloth? Cloth has a bad Lugia. Yeah, I don't think I don't think cloth is as well placed as it was. This Drago matchup is not good, right? Uh, yeah, I don't think it's great. I think Drago can I set up the, the Drago the, pool. The it poison can set up the thing. Pool and they the can go. They can hit 280, right? With the Petrant, if they push Petrant. If they push the Petrant after the KO, they hit 280. Off, then you can do the 280. But yeah. Regidrago can like take one turn with Dragapult to set up a big Kiorum turn. Yeah, that's true. All right. Let's see. Let's see. 11, 10, 8. 
eight. I think Tropagos is going to fall a little bit more. Potentially, yeah. I could see Terrapagos being like six. Yeah, like six or five, yeah. Let's put six. Let's put six for now. Okay. Um, so we've got Raging Bolt at 13, Reggie Drago at 11, Lugia at 10, Palkia at 8, Dragapult 8, Charizard 7, Terrapago 6, Bayonet 6, Ride on 5, and Iron Thorns at 4. Decks we haven't visited or talked about. Snorlax Snarl, Pidgeot Control, Goldango. Those all, I mean, they're all going to stay around 2%, right? They're not going to go up. Yeah, I mean, you've got the tried and tested Goldango and Pidgeot control players, and you're yeah. like, we've got Yellow Van Kempen. He's probably gonna just stick to Goldango. Yeah, you've yeah. got, we've got you know Alessandro Cremasoli. He will stick to Pidgeot control. Emma Hagen as well. They'll they'll stick to Pidgeot control because it's what they're good at. Yeah. And then Snorlax stall could see an increase. Like I wouldn't be mad at a Snorlax stall increase. It's Not great into Lugia, so it'd be like the quad temple build. Yeah. It's also but not like, great into Drago, right? It's like it Drago can... Cologne is like bad for them, right? Yeah, with the Cologne, it's bad, but it's whether the Dragos are playing the Cologne anymore. Yeah. Because people have kind of given up on mana fee with the Dust War decks. Right. right. And now, like, a lot of lists have either cut mana fee entirely or just. Never want to put it down. Yeah, fair. <clears throat> all right, well, let's jump into building out our tier list. Let's put all the bad decks in D. So, Lost Zone. What else do we want to put in D? I'd put Cloth in D. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Um, Snorlax is just not a good play for the tournament, right? It's not good into Lugia, but like it can be okay into Regi Drago. But how and is it like, into Palkia, Dustnor, and Dragapult? Like those are all bad matchups, right? Uh so like three, four, five, you know, we got what, eight, sixteen, twenty-six percent of the metas, like terrible matchups. I think you're okay into the Dustnor, actually. Like, you think I think so? you're okay into Palkia. Interesting. Palkia doesn't play too many switches, and it's got a lot of stuff that Fluke can hit early. Yeah, that's fair. And no way of picking any of it up, right? None. Yeah, none. All right, so I'm not a D tier. So anything else in D, or is that it? I think that's it in D. I think, like, just don't play silly single prize decks, and you're probably good. <clears throat> Isn't that sad right now that we can't play any single Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a little Bro. sad that like like ancient box isn't even something worth mentioning right now, right? Like all the single prize decks have kind of disappeared. Yeah, I mean like ancient box. Like the problem, like the problem with like single prize decks right now is like you've got cards like Dustnor and Briar, like just running yeah. around, right? And like it's those cards are so scary. Yeah, they're not great for single prize <clears throat> decks in the slightest. All right, so let's talk about let's move up to C. Um, for this tournament, I think Snorlax goes in C. Yeah, I I'd agree that Snorlax isn't great. It's not placed well for the for the event. Yeah, what else isn't placed well? I also don't think Charizard is placed well for this event at all. Like, I mean, because Drago's going to be up, right? Like Drago being up, Lugia being up. But can we really not... put Charizard in C tier though? I mean, it's got to go in B. Right, it's pro. It's it's like high C, low B. But the, right? the deck is just like so inherently powerful that it has to go here, right? Potentially. Yeah, I, mean, I don't think we can ever say Charizard's like. If you take Charizard to a major, you're making a mistake, right? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. You're you're probably fine taking it to a major. It's just not well placed right now. How's Terrapagos doing into this meta? I mean, the Dust Noir doesn't really do much. Against Lugia or Regidrago, right? Nope. And into Raging Bolt. Does it struggle? Uh, it only struggles if they have like three to four charms and they hit them all and you don't have an out to it, right? Because they just put charms in all their small guys. Yeah. And like you can't take KOs. Because the problem with that matchup is <clears throat> it used to be so favored because you give up one prize and you don't ever have to dust nor and you're always winning the prize trade. Yeah. Right? Now, 
with them playing charms and stuff, you have to dust nowhere um, to fix to fix the math. So maybe they start playing things like vacuums, you know, Potentially, like right. like But I, know I think the house until gets we see that money. happen overall, maybe maybe Terrapagos is just a C tier play for this event. It probably is, yeah. Right, because Like it just if house, it's it's losing the Drago. yeah, it, it loses Drago, it loses to Lugia. Yeah, the two thirty number is not a problem for Lugia, I guess. It's good. Lugia also just wipes the stadium a couple of times, and then the damage output just doesn't exist. True. 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 I mean, I think Goldengo probably belongs in C. I, I think Gold Angle is a B tier deck for the format. Ooh, for the format? Hot Yeah. take, bro. Like, Gold Angle in the hands of the right players is definitely a B tier deck. And, like, it's only going to be played by the right players. No one in their right mind that hasn't tested, like, hours of Gold Angle is taking it to a major right now. The people taking that deck know what they're doing into this meta, and they know it's good. Hmm. I don't know if your Zard matchup's good. I think it's pretty good. Like you can you can get enough energy early on. You've got Palkia. Yeah, but the Rad Zard, right? Yeah, the Radzard isn't great, right? But Palkia could potentially enable Radiant Greninja. I guess the Dragapult matchup's okay because, like, of the six and stuff. Uh I don't know. Maybe. maybe I'll, I'll revisit it. I'll, I'll keep it there for now. I'm okay with that. Anything else you want to put in C tier? Bayonet? I think I think Bennett isn't great into a couple of the decks with high percentile. Like, it's bad into Lugia, right? Yeah, Lugia plays minimal items. Bayonet into Drago's If Drago gets its energy early enough, Drago doesn't care. Right, I mean, you just gotta—you can't over bench because of that stupid tool, right? Yeah, because the gravity <laughs> gemstone. like, I, I think I—I'm I, not sure if you saw this on Twitter, but I, I played cloth last week and I hit a bayonet, and I'm like, "How do I win this matchup? Because I can't bench anything. Yeah. Like, you can't bench anything." And I was like, "Okay, well, I found the line. I put double turbo on Fez, <laughs> and then attached to Fez the jet." And then put the effective glasses on it to KO the bayonet. <laughs> yeah. but that was a that was a funny moment. Um. Okay. So. So I think Ben might not be great for this event. uh, yeah, maybe it's not. <clears throat> we'll put it down here. I'm cool with that. I get. I don't. I just don't think Dragapult's good into the meta. Yeah, I think I think the damage counters aren't great, but like. People don't think it's good into any meta, right? And then it goes and makes a top eight. I mean, it's just about hitting the right matchups for it, right? Like, it's got to hit... It, it wants to hit the Zards, but if Zard is down, right, then it's not going to do well. It wants to hit the Terrapagoses. It wants to hit the Palkias. It seemed to do okay into Roger Drago. Um, What's that one it's definitely Twitter not page favored that does the, does the... the wins? What's the Twitter page that does the... Uh... Results. I can see. Uh, Pokestats? Yeah, something like it's like something like that, right? Yeah. I'm curious. I'm just Like, curious. we can just go online and see what the meta is like for it, right? We can go decks. depending on what Lugia is playing in their list, then Dragapult is good into Lugia. It depends entirely on what attackers Lugia is choosing to play, right? If the Lugia is on Wellspring, then Lugia is favored. If the Lugia is on like a thick rat count, if they're on like the 3 3 Chinchino, they're probably losing to Dragapult because they Yeah. can't ever set them up. Yeah. Yeah, I'm okay with putting Dragapult in like B, I guess. I think that's probably where Maridon probably belongs to is in B. I Maridon is maybe in B, yeah. Maridon mean, because like can. it's in a good place, but the problem is that like, you can't consistently beat Bolt. The deck is the deck is like well placed, but Yeah. isn't as consistent Yeah. at getting set up and beating matchups it should be. 
Right, yeah. All right, let's talk about Pidgeot Control. Video I don't... control is like a solid A tier deck. Yeah, like, I mean, it's just it's good if you know how to play it, right? Right. All right, because, put that there. Because anyone playing it will will have tested all of the matchups and will be confident that they probably have a line into every matchup. Yeah. Are we comfortable putting thorns in A? I think for this event, it looks very well placed. And like it does get set up more reliably than Moriden. I think sure. Moriden and Thorns are like in the same group, but Thorns does get set up reliably and does have reliable win cons. And Moriden just crumbles sometimes. All right. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like putting thorns in A tier, right? Well, I'm like, just saying, like, I don't think it's Zard matchups that ve it's very good. I mean, it's it's okay, right? I don't, I, yeah. I don't, I don't think it's Dragapult matchups very good at all. Dragapult is bad, but Dragapult's on the down. Zard yeah. matchup is fine because Zard doesn't play Cologne anymore. Well, I guess the Palkia Dusk is 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 not good either because of Greninja, right? I mean, they need to find all of that first, right? Because they can't use the Squawk ability. They can't use the Palkia to get set up. The moment Palkia Dusk sets up one Greninja EX... They win. They win. But they have to find that. I mean, isn't it just an game. Irida for the most part? Like, you gotta have, like, Ultra Ball and Rare Candy and Irida. Like, like one of the... Like, that three-card combination, right? Yeah, probably. But not being able to Irida search the... The EX. Greninja is maybe the problem. Yeah, and you can't and you can't even radiant Greninja draw cards. So yeah, and like yeah. you could prize if you prize your one of Greninja. Yeah, what are we looking here? Let's uh look. I'm just curious. Where are we at, Thorns? What's your matchup percentage looking like? Uh yeah, it's winning 63% of the time against Palkia Dustnor. Wow. Sounds about right. This is do this these win percentages are actually kind of wild. Holy moly. Yeah, maybe Thorns is place pretty good right now. Okay. Um Lugia is an A. We know that. Drago's an A and Bolt's an A. All right, we can talk about moving up to S if we want to, but where are we putting Palkia Dust Nor? I think for this meta, it's probably not well. It's not as well placed as it has been. It's it's still a good deck, but I think it's probably a B tier pick for this. Event. Yeah, I mean, Drago's probably picking them off, right? Yeah, I mean, Drago's probably just beating all of them. Yeah, I mean, Drago's fifty eight percent into them. Yeah, Drago Drago has a strong strong way to KO the bench guys. Okay, all right. So this is what our tier list is looking like. Uh, do we want to have a conversation about anything in S? I would say there are two decks that are S tier and that like if you pick them, they are just so much more powerful than anything else in the format. It's Lugia and Drago. Yeah. Lugia and Drago, you could pick them up and if you know what you're doing with that deck, yeah. you can beat anything on this list. Yeah. And the Lugia versus Drago matchup is 50-50. Like... You can beat anything. Yeah. No, I agree. Those are the strongest decks, right? Like, I, I agree with that. <coughs> All right. I'm down. <coughs> I'm down to move them up. That looks balanced. Now, who's going to hate us for this tier list? Is it the cloth enjoyers? Is it going to be <laughs> all the cloth guys? I got to have a good time. You good over there? I see <laughs> a coffin spell. All well done that. <clears throat> Just one second, folks. Let's elevator music it up. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I think Lugia and Drago are both very good decks, and yeah. I'm 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 comfortable with putting them in S tier. Um, so yeah, this looks good. So if you are heading to Gdansk this weekend, this is your tier list and meta predictions. 
Um, Ethan, besides Lugia, because obviously you're going to win the tournament. We know that. Uh, <laughs> what what else would you pick to win the tournament? I would say... I'd say Iron Thorns has a chance. Ooh. That's a saucy pick there. Um, all right, so you took Iron Thorns. I'm going to take... Maridon. I'm taking Maridon. I think it's in a good place right now. Lugia's on its way up. Drago's on its way up. Um, as long as you can, you know, figure out how to beat your Bolt matchup pretty consistently, um, you look pretty good across the board there. So I'm taking Maridon. You took Reggie Drago. We'll see what happens um, this weekend in Gdansk. Um, usually this is the time I give you a chance to do some sponsor shout-outs and any – coaching opportunities you have, but thank you so much for coming on, Ethan. Um, you have any shout-outs or anything you want to do? I know you're struggling to speak over there. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, yeah, I've recently opened up Mattify, so I've started coaching. Um, I've coached a lot locally. Yeah. So moving to Mattify is cool. Yeah. Um, and I just want to shout out, like... <clears throat> uh, sorry. No, it's okay. <clears throat> I just want to shout out my local guys. So, like, the guys from the Isle of Man and the guys from Chesterfield. Yeah. <clears throat> and of course, your beautiful fiance, Pumpkin Amy. We all I love, love her. Pumpkin Amy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I know you're in a little coughing spell here, uh, but we're closing out the episode. I'll make sure to um, give you an opportunity to put something in the comments below as well. So, Everyone, that's your Gdansk uh, meta forecast and preview. Ethan, thank you so much for coming on. Um, if you guys are interested in learning about Lugia from Ethan, his meta is open. It'll be in the link below. That's going to do it for this week's episode of the Beach Court Podcast. And we'll be back at you next week with the results of the Gdansk meta um, and start to preview Surging Sparks a little bit with you guys. Until next time, have a good one. See you.